Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So today we get to hear one of the greatest stories in scripture, Joseph of the amazing Technicolor dream coat, right? So Jacob, who if we remember is the son of Isaac, who has been a schemer now that tradition carries on through the family. Joseph, who is the most beloved uh, child of Jacob's old age, his dad gives him a glorious coat. And the story we don't hear is that he's also a dreamer, a visionary, where he keeps seeing himself lording it over his brothers and his father. So his brothers hate him. His dad sends them out, to, sends Joseph out to his brothers who are tending the sheep. He finds his brothers, and as he's heading, they see him, and they're like, let's kill him. And then one of the brothers says, well, uh, there's a pit over there. We can just dump him in the pit, and there's no water, and we'll let God take care of it. And then they see Ishmaelite traders coming, and they're like, ah, we can sell him. But while they're eating lunch, the Midianites come through, find Joseph, sell him to the Ishmaelites, and we'll hear next week how they go to find their brother. Uh-oh, he's missing. That's a great story, and it leads us into the 400 years that the Israelites are in Egypt and living in slavery, but it's a story for another day of how God saves over and over and over again, even in the most unlikely situations. But today I want to focus on the Gospel of Matthew, another great story, but it starts out, it, it starts out by saying at the end of the day, but we don't hear about the day that they had had. The day that they had had is Jesus says to the disciples, let's go out in the wilderness and pray, like we've been working really hard. They get out in the middle of nowhere to pray and the crowds find them immediately. And Jesus teaches all day long, and at the end of the day, he says, they're hungry, go and gather food from them. They gather the food, Jesus takes it, blesses it, breaks it, disperses it, and at the end, everybody has their fill, they gather the 12 baskets, right? 5,000 men, not including women and children. Long, hard day. So at the end of that day, Jesus says to the disciples, you get in the boat and go to the other side. And then he disperses the crowds, sends them home. And then he says, now I can go up to the mountain to pray. And he goes up to the mountain to pray. Meanwhile, the disciples are in the boat. A storm comes up. And if you notice in this gospel, it doesn't say they were afraid of the storm. So they're in the boat all night long, storm going on. And Jesus sees the storm and he walks to them on the water. And that's when they are terrified. They think it's a ghost. They're terrified of the ghost. And Jesus immediately, and it says immediately, says, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Well, it is I. And Peter, we love Peter, says, if it is really you, call me to come to you. So Jesus does. He says, come on and get out of the boat. Peter hops out of the boat, starts walking on water while he's looking at Jesus. And then he notices the wind and the waves and he starts to sink. And he immediately cries out to Jesus, save me. And Jesus immediately grabs him, brings him in the boat, storms over. There's so much in that story the fear of Jesus as a ghost, and Jesus immediately responds, take heart, do not be afraid, it is I. As Peter is sinking, Jesus, and he calls out, immediately Jesus responds and saves him. Now what I know is that fear serves a good purpose in our lives. We are supposed to be afraid when our lives are in danger. We are supposed to be afraid when there is peril. And then we are supposed to call on Jesus. I don't know how many times it's one of the most oft said phrases in scripture, be not afraid. 
be not afraid. It mean, doesn't mean never, ever, ever be afraid. It means when you feel fear, notice what's going on and take action. And the action is call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. There are so many fearful situations in our lives, so many storms in our lives, so much peril in this world. And it's a wonder that we're not afraid all the time, but that's the point of this. Please do not live in fear. It is I. Trust in Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Believe in Jesus. And that's what we hear in the letter to the Romans, right? The word is very near you. It's on your lips and in your heart. Those who call on Jesus will be saved. But I wonder how is it that you call on Jesus? When is it that you call on Jesus? Because sometimes we're so swamped in the boat that we don't even think to call on Jesus. And there's many ways that we can help remind ourselves to call on Jesus. I like uh, Julian of Norwich. She says, the greatest honor we can give Almighty God is to live gladly because of the knowledge of his love. Julian of Norwich, an English mystic from way long ago, the greatest honor we can give Almighty God is to live gladly because of the knowledge of his love. We hear in the first letter of John that perfect love casts out fear. Does it mean the storm is over? No. Does it mean our life is perfect? No. What it means is we do not have to walk alone. Today, in case you haven't noticed, we have a baptism. Keone, who I think needed to step out for a minute, <laughs> but will be back. Uh, but if we remember our baptisms, that in those waters, those dangerous, chaotic waters, we die to Christ and live in Christ. We become part of a community. We become part of a group of people that when we are living in fear and peril and danger and being overwhelmed can come to us and say, take heart. God is with us. Take heart. God's love saves. And so today I invite you to turn to page 17 in your bulletin. And this might be something you can keep. And when you are fearful, when you are overwhelmed, when you are in the midst of storms, when there is peril in the world, it's an opportunity for you to find a quiet place, to light a candle, to silence your heart and to hear these words. Be silent, be still, alone, empty before your God. Say nothing, ask nothing, be silent, be still. Let your God look upon you that is all. God knows. God understands. God loves you with an enormous love and only wants to look upon you with that love. Quiet. Still. Be. Let your God love you. Today I invite you to receive the love of Christ, to live in the love of Christ, and then to be the love of Christ. Amen. <laughs>